Toys, one of the most widely collected items today. The average toy collector nowadays is between the ages 19 and 45. They generally grew up in an era where cartoon shows were often based on toy lines. There are many popular mainstream toy lines among collectors, including Star Wars, Ninja Turtles, and Masters of the Universe. Among the most popular collectible toy line originally created in the 1980s is Transformers. Transformers is one of those toy lines that had a cartoon created in order to sell toys. Transformers are toys that can change from robot to another form, usually a vehicle of some sort. As you can see here, Optimus Prime transforms from a robot to a truck. Vintage Transformers from the 1980s and reissues of Vintage Transformers are still highly collectible today. A lot of toy collectors really enjoy owning the toys they grew up with as kids. Even more sought after among modern day collectors are Masterpiece Transformers, which capture the look of the original vintage toys while giving them extreme detail to match their cartoon counterparts. Transformers are so popular that third-party companies make their own versions of the characters. These third-party companies have no affiliation with the official companies that make Transformers. Third-party Transformers are often more expensive than official Transformers, and sometimes are even higher quality than the official Transformers. Toy collecting has taken a new turn the past decade or so. Many credit Michael Lau for creating the first designer toys in 2001. Nowadays designer toys are becoming somewhat popular. Each one is like a work of art, and just like a work of art, there is an original that gets kept by the artist or the toy company, and there are copies made of the original that get bought by the general public. They also tend to be limited edition with the addition size being known by the general public. There are two main mediums that designer toys are made of, vinyl and resin. Vinyl toys are generally somewhat soft, hollow, and lightweight. Some even have articulation. Most are painted in a factory. Resin toys are typically hard, solid, and heavy. Resin toys are much more fragile than vinyl toys. Most have no articulation. Most are painted by hand. Japanese vinyl toys are typically called sofubi. Many of them are kaiju, which are giant monsters and strange beasts. There's a type of designer toy that I refer to as a platform toy. These include toys such as Labbits, Fat Caps, and the Dunnies you see on this table. Platform toys all have the same basic features. The differences mainly lie in the paint job or some different molded parts such as different heads or different faces. Dunnies are among the most popular of the platform toys. As you can see, they all have the same basic body and arms. Some are even exactly the same shape. Most have some version of the trademark Dunny ears. All look different, yet most have the same basic features. Blind boxes contain an unknown toy inside. On the side of the box, you can typically see which toy you might get in the box, and generally the box even tells you what your chances of getting each toy are. You always run the risk of getting a duplicate toy. Dunnies are among the most popular blind box designer toys. The blind box dunnies are around 3 inches tall. 
the non-blind box dunnies are around 8 inches tall. Part of blind box and designer toys in general are chase figures. When it comes to blind box toys, chase figures are usually blacked out on the box so you don't know what they look like. When it comes to designer toys in general, chase figures are usually like the original figure released, only a different color. Here's an example of the ironclad decimator dunny, followed by the chase version. Notice that they are the same, only different colors. Here I have a blind box from the Transformer Vinyl Toy Series. I don't know which toy I will get inside, but I will open it up right now and find out. Most blind box toys are enclosed in a foil wrapper inside the box. Also, some come with an art card of some sort. So let's see what I get. As you can see, it's in a foil wrapper. And it's usually a tear tab of some kind. And it looks like I got Grimlock, which is pretty good because this is one that I don't have. And included are accessories and a card. Custom toys are either a one-of-a-kind toy that has been sculpted and painted or a factory-made designer toy that has a one-of-a-kind paint job by an artist. Some custom toys are sculpted on top of pre-existing designer toys. Not all custom toys are one-of-a-kind. Sometimes you will find them available in small, limited numbers available to collectors. One way to get a custom toy is to commission an artist to make it for you. Another way is to simply buy it directly from the artist when they put it for sale in their online store. Another way to obtain custom toys is buying them from a toy show at an art gallery. When you buy from an art gallery, you typically pay a higher price because the artist has to give half of the profits from the sale to the gallery. Designer toys can mainly be bought at designer toy stores. These stores are usually different from your average toy store. A lot of designer toy stores have an art gallery attached to them. All of the popular designer toy stores have websites that you can buy from. Some of these stores include Rotofugi, My Plastic Heart, The Toy Art Gallery, D Corner, Monkey King, Tenacious Toys, Art Attack Toys, and Vinyl Riot. There are plenty of other great designer toy stores out there as well. Designer toys vary in price. Anywhere from $10 blind boxes to $200 and up high quality toys. While designer toys aren't the cheapest collectible out there, they still have a fairly strong following that will hopefully continue to grow in the future.